Right. Uh, in the previous videos, we already finished our discussion uh, by using the PPF analysis to show uh, the games from trade. Uh, simply speaking, trade is good, right? We should be better off through international trade. And um, PPF, Production Possibility Frontier, uh, is a very powerful graphical tool, okay? which uh, you guys learned from the introductory level course. As you can see, even you know, for this 400 level uh, course, we still rely upon it to show um, games from trade, right? Uh, here, we want to introduce another uh, more advanced graphical analysis. It's called RDRS analysis, which stands for relative demand relative supply analysis. It's, you know, as suggested by its name, it's actually the advanced version of the supply and demand analysis. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the logic behind the PPF analysis and RDRS analysis is actually very similar. Okay. But we still want to do RDRS because um, we, we believe this is good for you guys to develop a stronger reasoning um, scale, okay? especially uh, on the graph. Okay? The beauty of RDRS analysis is we only use one graph to show both economies, okay? If you recall what we did before um, with the PPF analysis, we lead, if we have two economies trading with each other, then we need to have two separate PPF graphs, one for each economy, right? But here, RDRS, um, we only lead one, okay? So um, let's check this out. All right. Um, the first thing we need to do is to, um, you know, to to um, set up the model. Okay. Uh, here we have only two economies. Let's call them home and foreign. Okay. In reality, this could be U.S. and Mexico, uh, England and Portugal. Uh, Vietnam and Germany, okay, whatever countries you find interesting, okay, uh, you can apply this model to their uh, trading relationship, okay. Um, more general, you can also say, you know, I just care about the U.S. domestic economy versus the rest of the world, okay. So this model works as well, okay. Now here in the home economy, um, they have L units of labor, okay? So that's the total labor endowment, uh, which is given. And ALC is number of hours of labor uh, used to produce one pound of cheese. ALW means number of hours of labor used to produce one gallon of wine. So um, in this hypothetical model, um, both economies are producing cheese and wine. There's no third good or service. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, only cheese and wine. And um, so here, uh, L stands for labor, and C stands for cheese, and W stands for wine. Okay, so these these uh, are two. You know. Um, um, you know, the, the hours of labor uh, spent producing it. And um, in foreign economy, uh, we have a very similar thing. The only difference is we use here asterisk or a star uh, to remind ourselves these are for foreign economy, okay? And L star is... Um, the foreign's labor endowment, 
a star lc a star lw or the number of hours of labor uh, spent producing cheese and wine respectively all right and uh, here um, alc alw a star lc a star w lw are called the unit labor requirement in other words they are uh, the number of hours of labor required to produce one unit of output okay and um please remember that a higher unit labor requirement means low labor productivity okay this might be a little confusing okay in other words the higher the the value of these variables means the lower the labor productivity because you know they require a higher number of hours producing one unit of cheese or wine. Okay. Now here you um, can easily find that if we use a total uh, unit of labor divided by ALC, you can actually find the maximum amount of cheese home can produce okay and um, if we use L divided by a L W that's going to be the maximum uh, amount of wine home can produce similarly you can get the same thing for foreign that's um, this one here okay uh, I already put in a table now here uh, I strongly strongly recommend you to pause the video and pull out the worksheet number uh, i believe it's worksheet number two okay and in other words the numerical example we went through before by using uh, the ppf okay so if you go back there you look at um, table one in in later table two you would find that here on the screen what we're talking about is just a general case of that okay so previously we give you numbers specific numbers so you can calculate these but here we use letters okay so it's going to be more um, like a general case okay again for the foreign oh I think I, I'm sorry I forget to put the star here it should be L star um, divided by a star uh, lc okay the same here l, l star over a star lw okay now once we find the maximum amount of quantities both economies can produce the next thing is we can figure out the opportunity cost of producing one unit of cheese or wine okay again this is exactly what we already did um, in uh, worksheet number two, I believe table two. Okay, so what we do is we figure out, you know, how many unit, how many gallons of wine we have to produce to be able to produce one pound of cheese in home right here. Okay, so we use the maximum amount of wine home can produce divided by the maximum amount of cheese home can produce. Okay. Now find that here um, the denominator is a fraction. We have to flip it, and so L get canceled out. So what's left over is just ALC over ALW. Okay. Again, you may find that you know um, in the worksheet um, it's pretty easy to understand with the specific numbers. Okay. However, here with the letters it might be a little more challenging. Okay. So you have to, you know, constantly remind yourself that this fraction here is actually opportunity cost of producing one pound of cheese. Okay. Now for wine, we use amount of cheese uh, the economy produced by using all its labor divided by amount of wine it can produce with all its labor. So again, L gets canceled out. And then finally, ALW over ALC is going to be the opportunity cost of producing one gallon of wine.
Okay. Now you may find these uh, are these just you know flipped uh, of this fraction. Okay, which is exactly what we found before. Okay, so the opportunity cost of these two, uh, if you you know multiply them together, they should be equal to one. Okay. Or one is a a reciprocal of the other. Now, following again, very similar. I'm not going to talk about that. The only difference here is you put the stars uh, in every uh, variable here to remind us these are the uh, for the foreign economy. Okay. Now, once we find um, the opportunity cost, um, then we're going to uh, be ready to talk about um, RDRS. Okay. Um, analysis here. Now, because um, this is uh, a challenging advanced um, demand and supply analysis, so uh, we're going to take a slightly different way this time. Instead of like you know what we did back in the introductory level course, we give you the demand schedule and supply schedule, and ask you to plot then right the demand curve, supply curve. Uh, or even in the intermediate microeconomics, we drive the uh, demand and supply curves, right? By using uh, indifference curves, for example. Um, here, we just want to, you know, put this graph in front of you, okay? And then we're going to uh, try to understand, especially this uh, relative supply curve, because it looks... Um, um, quite different from the regular supply curve. Okay, so the demand curve still uh, is the same, like downward sloping. Okay, so um, again, we're trying to in the next video we're trying to understand you know this uh, relative supply curve. Okay, um, there are several different um, segments uh, we need to discuss. Okay. Now um, note that the here the vertical axis is the relative price of cheese. In other words, it's PC over PW. Okay, um, the quantity here on the horizontal is also relative quantity of cheese. So that's you know um, amount of cheese produced in home plus that in foreign divided by the amount of wine produced in home plus that produced in foreign. Okay, so as we said before, here um, we only need one graph to show both economies. So everything is expressed as a relative sense. Okay, it's in relative sense. That's you know remember at the beginning of the semester I said that that's the beauty of international economics. Okay, every time we talk about you know trade exchange rates. Um, you have to think, you know, about both economies involved, okay? If not more than two. Um, so here, remember, um, when we move up along the curve, okay, I I'm sorry, along the y-axis, that simply means um, cheese becomes more expensive relative to wine, okay? More expensive relative to wine. So the the PC may not change at all if PW goes down. Okay, you still see this ratio goes up. All right, and same thing here when we move towards the right along the x-axis. That simply means the amount of uh, cheese produced uh, is more relative to amount of wine produced. Okay, uh, in the two economies combined. All right. Okay, so um, once we understand the elements of this uh, um, graph, then uh, in the next video, we're going to start um, understanding the more challenging things, okay, uh, more challenging.